Introduction to the Science of Hadith by Ibn Salah al Shahrazuri, 577-643 Category 17 Isolated Hadith Al-Afrad The significant aspects of this category have already been discussed in the immediately preceding categories. Nevertheless, I have given this topic its own chapter, just as Abu Abdullah al-Hakim did. To cover what remains to be discussed on this topic, we say Isolated hadith fall into the subcategories of absolutely isolated and isolated in relation to a particular aspect. 1. The first kind is the hadith a single transmitter and no one else relates. Its subcategories and treatment have just been covered. 2. The second kind is isolated in a relative sense. For instance, the hadith that a single reliable transmitter and no other reliable transmitter relates. This is virtually the same as the first category. Other examples of this are the hadith about which the following are said. This is a hadith with the Meccans, or the Syrians, or the Kufans, or the Khurasanis, and no one else relates, or no one related it from X except Y. Even if it was related through several lines of transmission from people other than X, or the Basrans were alone in transmitting it from the Medanese, or the Khurasanis were alone in transmitting it from the Meccans, and the like. We will not cite examples of this subcategory at length, since the matter can be understood without these examples. Nothing along these lines necessitates that the hadith be judged as weak, unless someone applies the statements, the Meccans were alone in transmitting it, or the Basrans, the Basrans were alone in transmitting it, from the Medanese, for example, or something like that. Ascribing the hadith to the scholars of a city or a group, in a way, the deed of a single tribesman may be ascribed figuratively, figuratively to the entire tribe. Indeed, Abu Abdullah al-Hakim did do this in the matter we are addressing. If this is the case, case, the hadith is treated in the same fashion as those in the first subcategory, God knows best. Category 18. Defective hadith. Uh, Al-Mu'allal. The scholars of hadith call this kind of hadith ma'lul. They use the construction as do the jurists in reference to a subject of legal analogy, the cause and the effect, al-illa wal-ma'lul. The specialists in the Arabic language and lexicography disapprove of the construction ma'lul. Be aware that the subject of defects, illal of hadith, is one of the most exalted, precise and noble of sciences of hadith. Only those possessing retention, experience and penetrating intelligence can become proficient in it. The defects consist of the hidden causes of impugnment in hadith. A defective hadith is one in which a defect impugning its soundness is detected, although it outwardly appears to be free of defect. That may apply to an isnad made up of reliable transmitters, which outwardly seems to fulfill the conditions of soundness. Someone being alone in transmitting the hadith as well as others contradicting him aid in catching the defect. Additionally, certain associated circumstances alert the expert in this matter to an occurrence of looseness in a connected hadith, of halting in a raised hadith, of the interpolation of one hadith into another, or of the commission of some kind of mistake by someone. On the basis of these associated circumstances, the expert becomes suspicious about the hadith and he either passes judgment against it because of them or hesitates, suspending judgment about the hadith. All of these things, so long as they are present in the hadith, prevent declaring it sound. Often they declare a connected hadith to be defective on the basis of looseness. For instance, the hadith appears with a connected isnad and it also appears with an interrupted isnad which is stronger that is, better documented and so forth, than the isnad to the connected version. For this reason, the books on the defects of hadith include all the chains of transmissions of a hadith. Abu Bakr al-Khatib said, The way to discover the defect of a hadith is to collect the lines of transmission, examine the differences of its transmitters, and examine their position in regard to retention, and their status in regard to exactitude and precision. It is related that Ali ibn al-Madini said, Chapter if the lines of transmission of the hadith are not gathered, its error will become apparent. Sometimes, and this is more common, the defect occurs in the isnad and sometimes it occurs in the text. 
Sometimes a defect occurring in the isnad impugns the sound of soundness of both the isnad and the text, as is the case when the de defect of looseness and halting is detected. Sometimes the defect in the isnad impugns only the soundness of the isnad without impugning the soundness of the text. The hadith which the reliable transmitter, Ya'ala ibn Ubaid, related from Sufyan al Thawri, from Amr ibn Dinar, from Ibn Umar, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, both of the parties in the sale have the option of refusal, is an example of a hadith containing a defect in its isnad which does not impugn the soundness of the text. This is an isnad uninterrupted through the relation of one upright transmitter from another, yet it is defected and un defective and unsound. The text is, in any case, sound. The defect in the transmission is in Ya'la ibn Ubaid saying, from Amr ibn Dinar. In fact, the hadith is from Abdullah ibn Dinar, from Ibn Umar. The authoritative students of Sufyan al related it in this way from him. Ya'la ya ya ibn Ubaid made a mistake saying Amr ibn Dinar instead of Abdullah ibn Dinar, both of whom are reliable. An illustration of a defect in a text is the phrase making explicit the prohibition of reciting in the name of God most merciful compassionate, which Muslim was alone in including in the hadith of Anas. Some people regard the relation of the aforementioned phrase as defective when they saw the majority of transmitters merely saying they used to commence their recitation with praise be to God, Lord of the worlds, without any explicit objection to saying in the name of God, most merciful, compassionate. And this is what Bukhari and Muslim were in agreement with to include in their sahih. These people believe that the transmitter who related the hadith with the aforementioned phrase prohibiting the recitation of Bismillah rahman rahim so forth paraphrased the text according to his understanding of it and he understood Anas's words they used to commence with the praise of God to mean they did not pronounce Bismillah rahman rahim and so the transmitter related the hadith in the way he understood it the person who did that erred because the meaning of the hadith is that the surah that is the chapter of the Quran they used to begin with was the Fatiha and the original text of the hadith contains no objection to saying Bismillah rahman rahim a number of other matters are relevant to that, including the fact that it is established that Anas was asked about commencing with Bismillah rahman rahim and he said that he did not have anything from the Messenger of God on that topic. God knows best. Be aware that the term defect, contrary to its original sense, is sometimes applied without qualification to the rest of the causes of impugnment, other than those we mentioned which take the hadith from the state of soundness to the state of weakness and keep them from being acted upon. For that reason, you find in the books on the defects of hadith a good deal of discrediting for falsehood, neglectfulness and carelessness and other similar types of dis discreditation. Tirmidhi even uh, uh, called abrogation a defect of hadith. Indeed, one scholar unqualifiedly applied the term defect to things which indisputably did not impugn, like someone transmitting as a loose hadith as loose a hadith which is reliable and a, price, a precise transmitter gives us support. He even said that the defective sound, sahih ma'lul, is one of the subcategories of the sound hadith. Just as someone else said that the anomalous sound shad hadith is one of the forms of the sound hadith. God knows best. Stay tuned for many parts.